Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss about Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Actually, there are two laws: Faraday's law one, Faraday's law two. So, from these two laws, we will learn the operation of some of the important machines like DC generator, DC motor, transformer. These are the machines depending upon the principle of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The principle is mainly electromagnetic induction. So see here, electromagnetic induction is a very very important word. Electrical to magnetic energy conversion. Okay, right. So now we will discuss about Faraday's law one and Faraday's law two. What is in law one and what is in second law? Okay, right. All of you listen carefully. because of this law is very helpful to learn the operation of some important machines okay how it helpful and how will it uh, useful we will discuss later right now what is the first law whenever the magnetic flux linking with a conductor changes okay whenever the magnetic flux changes which is linking with a conductor then an emf is induced in that conductor okay right leave it and i will tell you another one whenever a conductor cuts the magnetic flux and emf is induced in that conductor see here in both the cases emf will be induced across the conductor but the operation is somewhat different what is the difference between first one and second one and again see here this is this is called statically induced emf this is called dynamically induced emf okay Uh, don't bother about uh, these two definitions i will tell you clearly so what is the first law faraday's law when a rotating conductor or moving conductor see here there is a coil here in the figure so this coil moves or rotates okay please observe carefully when a moving or rotating conductor so this coil is called a conductor when a moving or rotating conductor placed in a magnetic field okay so there is a magnet this is a magnetic lines green color lines are magnetic flux lines so if we have there is another magnet in the left side so this is south pole okay so left one is south pole right one is north pole so now flux will passes from north to south we know that because of this is the uh, uh, magnetic class right so flux is passing from north to south and this is a constant flux because this will always flows from north to south this is not a moving flux it is which is always constant flux so already i told you this is a moving conductor when a moving conductor placed in a magnetic field constant magnetic field then an emf will be induced across the conductor okay this is the across the conductor we connected a galvanometer galvanometer indicates the deflection of the emf so in this galvanometer which is shows the value of the emf how much emf is induced across the conductor so clearly we i will say that there are two parameters first one is conductor second one is magnetic flux right so come to the right side table there are two parameters first one flux second one conductor what is the result emf so flux is the one of the important parameter input parameter conductor is also a parameter input parameter so because of these two parameters the output will becomes emf which is induced across the conductor okay now we will see how emf will be induced so in the first case okay moving flux okay i uh, recently I, i told you just now there is a constant flux so please observe the second one there is a constant flux which is passes from north to south and moving conductor so i will move this conductor either forward to backward or up upside to downside or left to right so when i move this conductor in the constant magnetic flux there will be emf induced okay so that emf will be called dynamically induced emf right if in case flux moves okay so if now uh, now here uh, conductor constant so in the first case constant flux moving conductor now constant conductor moving flux then also emf will be induced across the conductor that emf is called statically induced emf okay so for better understanding statically induced emf dynamically dynamically induced emf 
which one is called dynamically induced emf when the conductor moves or rotates okay please observe clearly when the conductor moves then it is called dynamically induced emf if conductor constant then it is called statically induced emf okay i will tell you the applications of these two emfs so for dynamically induced emf this will be applicable in dc generators okay in the dc generators in the dc generator uh, i will uh, tell you in the further classes uh, i will discuss you about dc generator working and operation all these things so now i will tell i will tell you the applications of dynamical induced emf dc generators in the dc generators emf will be produced or induced across the conductor in the dc generator the rotor will rotates so it means rotor rotates means conductor moves or rotating in the constant flux okay so that the application of the dynamical induced emf is dc generator right now statically induced emf which means constant conductor okay in the transformer if you observe in the transformer there is no a movable or rotating parts so but in that transformer primary emf is transferred to secondary side so it means so without the electrical connection there will be emf transferred from one side to another side how it is possible because of the electromagnetic induction principle so in there in in that statically induced emf will be produced in the secondary side because there is a constant conductor but flux moving how we we will move the flux because of the ac alternating current in the transformer transformers are always works on the ac power supply which means alternating current power supply so alternating current means alternate flux will be produced in the primary coil constant conductor will place nearer to the primary coil so that when the alternate flux will be there and the constant conductor is also there so because of these two parameters the output will be emf induced across the secondary coil so that that is called statically induced emf okay can you understand statically induced emf application is transformer dynamically induced emf application is dc generator right this is uh, the electromagnetic induction principle uh, sorry induction uh, law 1 this is a faraday's law 1 in the law 2 in the law 2 the how much emf will be induced across the conductor okay now we will see the second law so in the law 1 which is says that emf will be induced but in the second law how much emf will be induced we can calculate from this formula so it states that the magnitude of induced emf is always directly proportional to the rate of change of flux okay the magnitude of the emf or emf is directly proportional to okay rate of change of flux linkages because of the uh, change in flux the emf will be induced across the conductor so if we change the flux linkages then emf will be induced across the conductor this is the second law right so here observe e directly proportional to d psi by dt where psi is the flux linkages flux linkages indicated by psi or lambda in some textbooks or some materials which is indicated by lambda so flux linkages is equal to n into phi n means number of turns in the coil phi means flux amount of flux so now this formula becomes e is equal to minus d psi by dt okay that means e is equal to minus n d phi by dt where minus indicates if you observe in the uh, first one e directly proportional to d psi by dt but here there is a e minus sign negative sign means which is from the lenz law lenz law states that where emf will be induced there will be a opposing emf so for that opposing emf we can indicate with the minus sign or negative sign so e is equal to minus n d psi by dt volts will be induced across the conductor this is uh, from second law okay now we will take some example okay so before going to the example magnitude of the induced emf will be e is equal to blv sin theta right where b is the magnetic flux density flux density units are weber's per meter square l means length of the conductor which is meters sin theta okay where v is equal to velocity of the conductor that is meters per second from these parameters e will be varying so here observe this is a sin theta so sin theta means 
the output emf will be sinusoidal voltage now we will take some examples so first example question is a conductor of length length will be 1 meter moves at right to the uniform magnetic field of density flux density 1.5 tesla with a velocity of 50 meters per second this is the velocity now calculate the emf induced in it at an angle 90 degrees if theta is equal to 90 degrees how much emf will be induced if 30 degrees then how much emf will be induced now uh, take the given data at 90 degrees theta is equal to 90 degrees what is the formula e is equal to blv sin theta so at at the place of theta 90 and b is the 1.5 l 1 meters v 50 meters per second so the emf will be 75 volts at the time of 90 degrees at the angle of 30 degrees the emf will be 37.5 volts so this is the this is the emf induced in the across the conductor right i hope you understand these two laws so very very important laws before going to the concepts of dc generator transformer so complete machines are uh, depending upon the principle of electromagnetic so if you know clearly faraday's law 1 and 2 then you can understand easily operation of transformer operation of dc generator and etc okay thank you guys if you need any material about this topic please write your mail in the comment box i will send you to your mail i hope you understand this concept and we will discuss in the next class about singly excited system thank you guys thank you very much